once again, we have to join you to talk about an unarmed person that was killed by the police. This time, this person was beaten to death. Holy shit. First, let's name the police officers who were feeling so emboldened that night. Let, let's, let's give them the shine that they so, they so blessedly deserve. To Darius Bean, Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin the third. What a way to take down that legacy, bruh. Desmond Mills Jr., Justin Smith, five members of the now dismantled Scorpion unit. None of these gentlemen are over 35 years old. None of these gentlemen have been on the police force for longer than five years. It is rare that people on the force are allowed to join special units beneath 10 to 15 years of experience. So that within itself will be investigated. <laughs> Important to note that as of today, all five officers will be charged with felonies, murder two with a minimum of 15 years, maximum of 60 years, uh, facing up to 153 years in prison if they get found guilty of all charges. And these officers were specifically the ones who beat Tyree Nichols to death on January 7th. Subsequently, not alone, though, it's important to note that there are other officers who not only were at the scene, but arrived to the scene, including EMT, who were subsequently fired uh, as of today's reporting as well. Three EMTs. Let's make sure to note them as well. Robert Long, Jamichael Sandridge, and Lieutenant Michelle Whitaker have all been fired from the Memphis EMT division with regards to the Tyree Nichols case as well. Yep. Two of them were EMTs. One was uh, a fire chief or something like that. Thank but you. EMTs report up to the fire department there. <laughs> like. Correct. Who were all involved in the incident of January 7th of an infraction, a basic traffic stop, which has not been confirmed by video cameras or by the police should have even occurred in the first place. So far, there has been no evidence that Tyree Nichols was recklessly driving. Um, I watched about 20 minutes of the video. It is the most sickening thing I've ever seen in in my lifetime. I think it's way worse than George Floyd. For me, it was reminiscent of the, the photos and deaths that occurred during apartheid in South Africa. It reminded me of murders of people like Stephen Biko that were beaten to death by law enforcement during the apartheid movement. And I, I'm deeply disturbed on a level I don't think I can in, I can say I've ever experienced in my lifetime. It, it, this cut me way worse than George Floyd. What say you? I'm still processing it. I haven't been able to bring myself to watch the entire video with the sound on because the initial gut-wrenching part of it already got to me. But I have seen the video with the sound off. Let's get into some context, some added context to help everyone kind of understand more about this. So the Scorpion unit. Uh, I'm going to look up what Scorpion stood for, but the name was an acronym. Yeah, I mean, Street Crimes of... Operation to Restore Peace in Our Neighborhoods. There you go. Street Crimes Operations to Restore Peace in Our Neighborhood. Oh, the irony. What? Yeah. And also, what the fuck does pulling over Tyree Nichols have anything to do with restoring peace in the neighborhood? Even if he was recklessly driving, did you need to beat him to death? You couldn't just... Yeah, I mean, they didn't beat Hannibal Lecter to death. I, I see no reason to beat this boy to death. And he was coming home from photographing the sunset. I mean, can you imagine how peaceful he must have been inside his his soul? He's around the corner from his house. Yeah. You know, he he probably had a great day. And it's amazing how a series of events can come together, no control of your own, and absolutely dismantle your life and the life of others. For me, I was inconsolable. I cried for my ancestors when I watched this video. And I cannot imagine watching my son be murdered like that. I I would I might go scorched earth after that. I don't I don't think that mother will ever sleep again for the rest of her life, knowing that her son was murdered 80 yards from her house, three houses away. And according to the footage, 
when the police officers pulled over Tyree, they did not even ask him anything. They didn't ask him for his license or his registration. They didn't give him any instructions. They literally just yank him out of the car, throw him on the ground, start cursing him out, calling him a bitch, kicking him in the stomach, tasering him and pepper spraying him. And I'm like, okay, we don't even do this to like serial killers, right? Like Jeffrey Dahmer made it to jail. Jeffrey Dahmer had his day in court. Why can't we? That's all we're saying. We're not saying black people don't commit crimes. We're not saying black people shouldn't be arrested. We're just saying, how come we can't seem to get our day in court? Hannibal Lecter does. Jeffrey Dahmer does. The Gacy clown killer made it to court. Is there a reason African-American boys who have infractions can't seem to just get to court and fight a ticket like everybody else? Right. Made those police officers burn in hell. I'll tell you right now, I don't forgive them. Fuck them. Yeah. The, The common refrain every time this happens is well they should ju- they should just comply when it's black people and we bring race into it it's well black people have a problem with authority these cops started beating this man as they started st- beating him instantly and so and then they're saying well well he ran from the cops he ran well, because yeah he because you were beating him instantly they immediately started beating him oh. they yanked him out the car and immediately started stomping him so yes i mean he, fight he says fight. it mechanism is going to take over at some point because they weren't even interested in trying to handcuff him for for uh for no. very long they weren't interested in getting his id or actually nope. conducting a traffic stop there was no investigation of any kind and you hear him say to them he's like okay you guys are doing the most right now he even says it calmly like you guys are really doing the most right now like just take it easy i'm on the ground he's not armed he is outnumbered and i think they got salty because i mean after they had to chase him because he dipped after he realized that they were going to murder him on the sidewalk and he was right his instincts were on point exactly they were out of breath they were pissed that he ran off i mean they were just a straight up gestapo gang and i have no mercy on them they've humiliated themselves and their families and i hope they burn in hell I got no forgiveness in my heart from him. I'm not in the forgiveness business. That's God and Jesus. That ain't my line of work. And, you know, this also calls to mind another recent death at the hands of the police that happened in Los Angeles this month as well. Keenan Anderson. He also was involved in a traffic stop. Uh, Not a traffic stop. Actually, there was a car accident. He's the one who called the police. And he wanted to go to a more visible area. He's he's compliant. The video shows that he's compliant. He's got his hands, you know, behind his head and he's on both knees. And he says, I just want to go to a more, uh, to a more visible area. So he, he does get up after that and, but he doesn't run. He calmly walk, walks to a more visible area and goes to get back, you know, in the same position. And then the cops mm-hmm. tackle him and they tased him to death. Now, why did he do that? Why did he freak out? Why did he have a panic attack? whatever you want to say, because he had the feeling that these cops were going to murder him because they were being overly aggressive from the very beginning. From the jump. Treating this like a person who needs help after a car accident. They immediately showed up and became aggressive and escalated the situation. He ended up dying at the hands of the police. So his instinct, as well as Tyree Nichols' instincts, were correct. These police were not interested in even doing the job of policing. They were interested in doing the job of beating you to death or tasing you to death for no reason. They weren't interested in responding to the call that they were asked to go respond to. This is one, it is by far the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in real time in my lifetime. There's no excuse for this whatsoever. The sickening part about this is that based on some of what I've uh, read, not only was this stop in, not validated as of this time, there was no evidence that he was recklessly driving. There was no evidence that they indicated any instructions to him whatsoever when they opened the vehicle. I'm also reading that they actually contacted his mother and told her that he had been arrested for a DUI and was being taken to the hospital, but there was no need for her to come there because from the hospital, he was going to be arrested and booked. So they started piecing together a story with the mother, which was not true. And to be emboldened enough to start piecing together a story on camera, to me, is the most bizarre part of the entire video. Mm -hmm. And that 
if this situation doesn't show you right in front of your eyes what systemic racism looks like, I don't know what will. Because the indicator is, is that every part of law enforcement that showed up to that scene, the EMT, the two chiefs that were at the scene supporting police officers, no one responded to the situation as if something was wrong here. That's right. the systemic part. Everyone acted normal as this young man died less than 100 yards from his mother's house. Right. Now. That's the systemic part, that no one thought that anything was wrong with this in that right. moment. Now, people are going to say, well, how is it racist if it was five cops that that beat him? Let's talk about that. Because racism is internalized. That's why every community pits its light skins against its dark skins, because everyone is trying to align with that. And when you go into law enforcement, you have to align with the culture of the police department. Nobody goes in Gandhi and turns all everybody in there into Gandhis. You have to become a part of that culture. The culture is bigger than you. No one person is going to change it. And then five black guys ain't going to be the first. Right. The also, culture. it's to note the culture is is the supremacy. Right. The The police culture. It's embedded in it. Where they believe every black person is a criminal, especially if you're a black right. man. They believe is guilty you, first. Exactly. You're, they believe you're a criminal. They believe because of that, they can do whatever, or they, they believe because of that, anything they do to you is justified. And they believe everyone else feels the same way. And because no one is willing to clock to cross the thin blue line. And when we do see cops, regardless of color, actually say, hey, that's enough, or call someone out for, for aggressive uh, policing or police brutality, it's those officers who get reprimanded. It's those officers who get fired. It's those officers who get ostracized and eventually forced out of policing, not the ones that are the bad apples, not the ones that are getting complaints all the time. Okay. There's, there's stories that we can cover another time of officers that have come forward. Uh, now that they are no longer police officers. We're talking former police officers that were reprimanded, ostracized, and essentially forced out of policing because they came forward. You can Google it yourself. Okay. So we're not race baiting here. The pattern of behavior, regardless of what American police department you're looking at, shows a clear bias, and the data supports that. There was a Harvard study done, and the headline of that Harvard study said, hey, black, pe uh, hey, black people, uh, unarmed black people and unarmed white people are shot at the same rate by police in America. That was the headline. And that was surprising. People think you they, they shoot black people more. But what that study also found is that they beat black people more. And this is a Harvard study. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they controlled for the race of the officers. They controlled for what type of crime was committed, what type of call the officers were responding to. They still saw a very high degree of bias when it came to use of force. Mm -hmm. They beat black people more yes they do we're physically manhandled more people are quicker to put their hands on your person more they're not gonna they're not gonna grab some white woman or some white guy out of his car and just throw him down on the ground to beat him like that there's absolutely no no way they're gonna do that because they're assuming that this guy's either got a network or he's got resources they don't yes. think that about black communities yes have you ever heard of a white person being beaten to death by cops of th any color? three doors from their house no Three doors from their house? Yeah. And they, they could have actually let him go home. Yeah. They could have just let him go home.